When Uki and Hinako were young, they made a deal with a witch. The witch approached them on separate occasions. She first approached Uki and threatened to harm Hinako. Should he pass her test, however, the witch also offered a great reward. She did the same to Hinako, threatening Uki's life while offering a reward. So they both ended up agreeing to the deal, without knowing that the other also made a deal with the same witch. Eight years later, as Uki and Hinako entered high school, their deal with the witch came into effect. The witch's deal forbade them to not do it with each other until they turned 18. To make it more challenging, however, Uki and Hinako were also given the power to spy on each other in their most private moments. Of course, neither of them are aware that the other person can see them while doing it. They both think that only they had made a deal with the witch. On average, Hinako does it once a day. Sometimes, she'll even do it twice. Whenever she does, Hinako thinks of Uki and even says his name out loud at times. Because of his witch-given powers, Uki is aware every time she does so, and he falls in love with her even more because of it. Whenever he's at it, Uki gazes at a photo of Hinako. He too is oblivious to the fact that she can witness him in his act. However, the only thing Hinako is bothered by is the photo he has of her. She thinks that the photo isn't the most flattering of her. Despite their strong feelings and mutual knowledge of their affection, they refuse to admit their love for one another. In fact, they deny it so vehemently that their classmates believe they hate each other. One day after school, a sudden downpour surprises Uki, and he is forced to take shelter at a nearby convenience store. As he waits for the rain to stop, Hinako rushes to find refuge under the same convenience store. Uki finds himself captivated by Hinako's appearance in her drenched school uniform. Sensing his gaze, Hinako confronts him, calling him gross. Uki averts his eyes in embarrassment, and an awkward silence ensues between them. Unable to withstand the awkward silence, Hirisaka turns to head inside the convenience store. Uki thinks she's avoiding him, so he asks why she hates him so much. Angrily, she retorts that she simply needs to use the bathroom. Then, a sudden clap of thunder startles them, causing Hinako to grab Uki's arms out of fear. She then demands Uki to come with her and wait outside the bathroom door as she's scared. Once inside the bathroom, her shyness immediately takes over. She gets excited at the thought of Uki being able to hear her, and that he might even do it later thinking of this exact moment. Unable to contain herself any longer, she surrenders to her impulses in the convenience store bathroom. Meanwhile, fully aware of what is happening inside, Uki struggles to maintain his composure too. When they later get home in the evening, Uki gets yet another vision of Hinako. This time, she takes photos of herself while doing it. Uki gets confused about what her intentions are with those pictures and struggles to fall asleep all night. The next day in class, a couple of boys from another class visit their classroom. They approach Hinako, requesting a moment of her time. One of them claims to have something important to tell her. Hinako's friend tries to intervene and tell them to go away, but Hinako insists it's fine. Then, the boy takes out a small letter from his back pocket and hands it to Hinako while confessing his feelings for her. The entire class falls into silence, including Uki, who observes from a distance. To his relief, however, Hinako rejects the other boy's confession and politely apologizes to him. The boy's friend asks why she rejected him. Hinako reveals that she already has feelings for someone else. Silence befalls the class once again. However, the other boy remains skeptical and asks who exactly she likes. Blushing with embarrassment, Hinako confesses in a hushed voice that they are not dating yet. Undeterred, the boy asks her to reconsider and give him a chance if she gets rejected after making a confession. However, Hinako confidently claims that the person likes her back, and she is certain of it. As Hinako's friends later tease her about what happened, Uki stares over at her from his desk. Hinako takes notice of his staring and they start bickering again, appearing to their classmates as if they really do hate each other. Upon returning home after school, Uki's mother informs him that there is a mail addressed to him. He takes a look at the envelope, but it offers no clue about the sender's identity. Once he opens it up and examines its contents, he realizes what it is. Hinako's selfies from the other night. As he gets embarrassed and considers that Hinako's affection for him might be getting excessive, he admits to himself that his feelings for her are just as strong. Meanwhile, 
Hinako anxiously waits for Uki to start beating it with her new photos. But suddenly she panics, realizing that she didn't show her face in any of the photos she sent him. She berates herself for the oversight. The following day in class, the teacher asks Hinako for a favor as the classroom president. He then suggests that Uki should accompany her on the trip. While Uki tries to decline politely, the teacher informs him that he wasn't asking. Hinako then offers to go by herself. However, the teacher suggests that the two of them should get along better and take the trip together. Secretly, Hinako panics, worried that being alone with Uki for an extended period might make her reveal her true feelings for him. As they make their way to their destination, Hinako avoids making eye contact with Uki and keeps her distance. Uki notices her behavior and calls her mean for disliking him so much. Suddenly, the train sways, causing them to come into unexpected physical contact. Both of them quickly look away, feeling embarrassed by the situation. At the next stop, the afternoon rush hour packs the train with more people, forcing Uki and Hinako to be pressed even closer to each other. Hinako starts to panic, concerned that Uki might be able to sense her racing heartbeat. She becomes conscious of her sweating and worries if he can smell it. In a moment of curiosity, she wonders if she can catch Uki's scent and leans closer to his neck. Uki, also feeling overwhelmed, starts to panic as well. Just as the tension between them builds, the train sways again, causing them to fully embrace each other. They both become intoxicated by each other's scent and nearly succumb to the intensity of the moment. However, the train reaches the next station just in time, and they quickly disembark. Uki and Hinako act as if nothing happened, avoiding eye contact and pretending that the incident didn't affect them. Deep down, though, they both suspect that the other will do it later, privately reflecting on what transpired between them. They finally arrive at the house instructed by their teacher. It stands before them as an imposing gated mansion. Strangely, they both experience a faint sense of familiarity, as if they had been to this mansion before. Hinako presses the bell, and they hear a voice through the intercom. She introduces herself, and the person on the other side grants them access. However, they are informed that some rituals are currently taking place, and are asked to follow the instructions given. Uki becomes apprehensive, and questions whether it's a good idea to go inside. Despite his concerns, Hinako insists on going in, emphasizing that they are representing their school. Then, while shyly averting his gaze, she extends her hand and suggests that they hold hands as they enter. Uki laughs at her cute demeanor, causing Hinako to blush in embarrassment. Then, he gently takes hold of her hand, causing Hinako's heart to race intensely, her pulse reverberating in her chest. As they step inside, they find the place eerily empty. Walking hand in hand down a long hallway, Hinako avoids making eye contact with Uki, her mind perplexed by the intense sensations coursing through her since they started holding hands. She imagines that if Uki were to make a move, she wouldn't be able to maintain her composure. Ultimately, she decides she can't handle it anymore, so she decides to find a bathroom to clear her mind. Before she finds one, however, they stumble upon a message, instructing them to tidy their hair and clean their clothes. While they find the instructions peculiar, curiosity gets the better of them, and they comply. Moving forward to the next room, another message awaits them, instructing them to remove their outerwear and shoes. As they progress from one room to another, the messages become increasingly bizarre. At last, they encounter the final message, which directs them to apply cream behind their ears and between their legs. Unspoken between them, both Hinako and Oki entertain the notion that this strange directive might be connected to the witch they encountered all those years ago. Hinako offers to apply the cream on Uki. Before he can respond, she forcibly pushes him toward the sofa and positions herself on top. With a careful touch, she begins applying the cream behind his ear, then proceeds to his thighs. Time passes, and Hinako completes the task, leaving Uki with a radiant glow. As he rises from the sofa, a sly smile dances on his lips, silently signaling that it's now his turn. Initially, Hinako resists the idea, but she relents eventually. She goes on top of the sofa and turns her head, allowing Uki to apply the cream behind her ear. As his finger brushes against her skin, a soft moan escapes Hinako's lips, causing Uki to tense up as well. 
Hinako struggles to maintain her composure, teetering on the edge of her self-control. Sensing the palpable tension, Uki suggests it's time to apply the cream between her legs. Having followed all the instructions, Hinako and Uki dress in the clothes provided for them. As they step into the last room, they are warmly greeted by an elderly lady who requests that they take a seat. She introduces herself as a sponsor of their school and explains that due to her condition, she is unable to leave the house. Consequently, the school's students visit her once a year. Hinako and Oki engage in a lively exchange, sharing stories about their experiences and life at school. After a pleasant interaction, Hinako and Oki bid farewell to the gracious sponsor and make their way out of the mansion. From her window, the elderly lady watches them leave, a gentle smile gracing her face as she reflects on their preciousness. Then, the witch whom Uki and Hinako met all those years ago appears behind the old lady. She agrees with the lady that they have indeed grown up well, and that they will produce a fine successor for them.